And so this segment, we're just going to share. We're going to let our hair down and we're going to shake it and we're just going to share, okay? Uh, as the spirit leads, okay? And here's, here's something I want you to chew on and then to respond to, okay? And it's a scripture that comes, comes out of uh, Genesis 37, verses 19 through 20, and it has to do with Jacob. And remember, uh, Jacob was God's chosen, as are you. You're chosen for your respective field. And it says, and even your walks, your journeys in, in Christendom. And the scripture says, and they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. They saw their brother cometh, coming. And they said be, to one another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him. Let us kill him and cast him into some pit. It doesn't matter which pit, but some pit. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. Mm. Even when you go to Memphis and you, you, you visit the memorials, that scripture is there where Dr. King was, was, uh, was, was martyred, as Dr. Tarver has so aptly put, that scripture is there. What we shall see, what will become of his, of his dreams. Mm. So they killed the dreamer. It was an era of domestic uh, terrorism. Because Dr. King was killed, Malcolm X was killed, uh, both Kennedys, John uh, 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 Fitzgerald Kennedy was killed, and Robert was killed. And so it was, it was an era of domestic terrorism, and I knew that as a little girl. So they killed the dreamer, Dr. King, what had, but what has become of his dreams? Did they die with him? So can I just say this? That's the, the thing that I, that I love about the word, and one of the things that... Um, the word tells us to write the vision. So Dr. King declared his vision. Yes. And he was prophetic in saying, I may not get there with you. But the wonderful thing about that scripture, when it says write the vision, and it says make it plain, because it says, because it shall speak. Yes. You may not be here. But the vision that God gave you that you wrote it down or you prophesied it out of your own mouth will begin to speak. And so when I think about Joseph, there's that scripture in Genesis 50, 20 that people always quote. They quote, you meant it for evil, but uh -huh. God meant it for good. But the end of that scripture says so that many lives would be saved. Yeah. And one of the things Joseph was letting them know is you sent me here evilly. But yeah. God sent me here for good because now based on my position of authority, I have the ability to save the posterity of God. I have the ability to ensure that the 11 tribes and their children and that posterity continue to eat. So when I think about Dr. King, I often, and Linda Lee Tarver, I want to thank you. I pray for his children because yeah. his children were the, they had to experience such a great sacrifice. You know what I mean? Their dad was in, in line with doing what God called him to do. And so my prayer for them today is that God will restore that there would be a double portion on their life, even yeah. at this age, that their latter days would begin to reflect the influence and the sacrifice that their, their dad said. And one, that his blood, just like Abel's blood, would begin to cry out to the heavens. Amen. 52 years later, God, I want to see the manifestation in full demonstration of the dream you gave me. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. I also think that it wasn't Martin Luther King's dream. I mean, we say that in shorthand, but it was God's dream yeah. given to Martin Luther King. That's good. And remember, God's word does not return void, but it accomplishes the thing it was sent out to do. So there's no way man can't, man's machinations can't halt that, right? God's word will be done. And so yeah. um, what we have to just make sure of, for all of us as we do our thing is that we hear is this the i am the now word he yes. gave the current present word and it prospered yes you know when we do the same thing now and all of our respective spheres of influence and all of what we do when we bring god's word now it will produce also Forever. Amen. I, I want to just amen both um, my sister Monica and Dr. Vicki Lynn on what they shared so far. That is my 
understanding of Martin Luther King that he was a man of God and to look at him for anything less uh, to me does a disservice mm -hmm. to his, his calling. Mm -hmm. He was not called here to be a civil rights leader. He was called here to preach the gospel, proclaim, to speak for those who could not speak up for themselves and to do the work, whether he saw it or not. Mm -hmm. Many of those who the Lord has called to do a work to do the building that was not able to build, mm -hmm. able to, even Moses was able, was not able to cross into the, the mm -hmm. problem there. But he was purposeful in being obedient in doing that work and to being part of it. And that's all that I can even ask for, Lord, even if I don't see what you have uh, put on my heart or the dream that you have put on my heart, uh, allow it to come to pass because it glorifies you that someone will see. We are living epistles. Yes, we are. Uh, and people are already reading our letters. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, my prayer is that that the work that the that Martin Luther King continued um, will continue on with us. Right. You know, the Lord has placed in us some of us to do the work. Not every one of David's sons. And we know some of them were wicked, were able to carry and do the work to finish the building and all of that. They weren't able to do that. But there are some who can. And so for Martin Luther King's family, I do pray for them. They have gone through such tragedy, not unlike some of us who have had great loss in our own family, but are keeping on. But the but those who die in the Lord. Uh, oh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful crown they have. Yeah, and so I am, uh, I am looking forward to if the Lord allows me to just be amongst that number. I'm so excited about that, uh, to see him, uh, to meet with all of the, those who have gone before us. Uh, so that is, that's a wonderful thing. I, I look forward to meeting Martin Luther King personally. Amen. <laughs> I am too. And Apostle Sylvia, you know, you talked about it, that Jacob was God's chosen. Dr. King was one of God's chosen. But you said at the beginning that we are one of God's chosen. And so my belief in that is that, you know, our scripture talks about he he's going to finish that good work that he's already begun in us. Yeah. And it should inspire us today as we remember Dr. King. We've That's got true. to remember that God sent us here. God yes, sent his son, right, not to save us so that we can now tell others to spread the good news about him. And so we all have some work to do. No, we may not all be the leader, uh, a civil rights leader. We might not all be an activist that we call activists, but we all have a work to do. That's right. And so it, it just reminds me that we are certainly chosen. We're, yes, we're yes. royal priesthood. Yes. You know, there's something in us that we were created in a special way, you know, that, that God made us so that we can go out and do his work. This isn't about us. And as you said, Dr. Vicki, my desire, the desires of my heart. Yes, he gave us the desires of our heart, but we connect first to him. Yes, and so now what is it that we are called to do? And that's what we've got to do now is pause to think about, yes, there's some wonderful work that Dr. King did, but what am I doing? What is my legacy? Because yes, his children have a legacy, but we do too. Yes, right. yes we do. We all have a gift and a calling, and it's our responsibility to humble ourselves to go to God and figure out what it is. But we all do. And the things that he whispers to us in, in secret and the things that he tells us tonight, we have to proclaim for it. We may not all be prophets, but we have to proclaim in our sphere. We have to stand up to righteousness, stand up for truth, you know, but we have to go to him because we have to rightly divide the word of truth, right? So, so I'm like every single person, there's no one on this planet that doesn't have a plan and a purpose from God. And there's no one that can, can lie still in the face of injustice. And the Martin Luther King, like when he said, um, justice, uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Right. We, we all have a part to play in this at this moment for such a time as this. And we just have to be bold in him. You know, we may not have national platforms, we may not have global platforms, but um, 
uh, Jeremiah, uh, uh, the Lord says uh, to Jeremiah that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Right. All right. Before you were even thought of, before your parents were even born to come together to conceive you, I knew you mm -hmm. and I called you. OK, as a prophet unto the nations. So, so there is we, we all have purpose. We all have purpose and we have a reason for being here. But, you know, the powerful thing about um, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, King and as I believe Linda Lee stated, um, it's about posterity, and it could have been uh, you, Elena, but it's posterity. I am here, not for me. It's really not about me. As a mature woman of God, I come to realize that it's not about me, and it's not about my desires or even my feelings, but it's about future generations. It's about my son, yes, but it's about my grandchildren and my grandchildren's grandchildren, okay? And so it's very uh, significant that that we realize that we may not have, we have the, we need to recognize the platform that we do have. Right. And so that is right on uh, Dr. Vicki Land. And then the scripture in Hebrews eleven thirteen says, and it's the uh, uh, Hebrews 11 is the hall of faith. Mm -hmm. talking about the men and women of faith. And it says in verse 13, these all died in faith, yes. not having received the promise, not having received. but having seen them afar off were, and they were assured of them. They embraced them and they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. In other words, we are, 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 are marching through. Right. Um, so I would just like for you all to comment on that as we close, as we're going to shift and Vera Riley is going to uh, minister another song as we close. But I want to take the last few minutes just to kind of discuss that. Apostle, I just want to say this. It's important that we remember that the promise was the return of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so even when you look at Jesus in Luke 4, 18 through 20 and Acts 10, 38, it says, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Boom, 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 boom. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power to go about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil because God is with him. So we are in the dispensation of the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The Holy Spirit is the power. He is what brings the manifestation of the kingdom. And the kingdom has its own um, secret service. The kingdom has its own provisions. The kingdom um, will protect you from assassination, whether it's your character that's being assassinated or your voice is being assassinated. And so we need to be assuring that we are asking God for real Holy Spirit come and let the manifestation of the kingdom come. And I'm going to end with this. Jesus said, pray that thy kingdom come. But when Jesus was on the earth, he said, the kingdom of God is in you. Yes. So we don't pray go, your kingdom come now. We say, God, let your kingdom be manifested in me because yes. it's already here. God yes. bless you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I was, I was listening to that. And earlier you had asked us about let freedom ring. What does it still mean? And both of those kind of come together for me because um, we haven't arrived, you know, and some died before, but it's coming up. And I thought about um, Martin, Martin Luther King, that freedom ring, and I was thinking, you know, that word let, like we have to allow this to continue. There's a, there's a part that we have to play. It's a joint venture, right, between all of us, you know, white, black, poor, mm -hmm. power, lowly, you know, and so... It, the dream has not been fully realized, right? So some of the notes have um, been played, but but it's been discordant. You know, it's, we're supposed to ring with the harmony of liberty, right? We're not ringing yet. There, and if we exchange equity and justice for freedom, for the word freedom, let equity and justice ring, then it's more clear that we collaboratively have work to do for the fulfillment, right? There has been change. I'm no longer living in the colored section. There has been change, but the mentality of racism, the mentality that we sowed into and you reap what you sow has to be broken. It has to be broken and God can do it. And so I'm like, when you scratch the surface, you see like the Capitol riots, you know, less than two weeks ago, that there's still a need. 
but we march on till victory, victory is won. And so that's why I feel like we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Ladies, Amen. we must, we must go. <laughs> I know, I know. We could do this for hours. This has just been so phenomenal, so phenomenal. Um, and it does take a village. It takes us all. Unity, unity, of, of, uh, unity. And so we are going to, I want to thank you, Monica Galloway, Councilwoman Galloway, all the way from Flint by way of Chicago. <laughs> Man, uh, Dr. Vicki Lynn Holmes, Dr. Linda Lee Tarver, and uh, Superintendent Elena uh, Ross, Zachary Ross, Zachary <laughs> Ross. Thank you, ladies, for sharing with She Speaks today, for She Leads Michigan, this broadcast, which is titled She Speaks, as we commemorate the life and the legacy of, of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, as we relive our lives, and our lives are open epistles, and we each have a platform, and we each endeavor a man to do what we uh, what we were put here on the earth to do. So when we join Dr. King, we may we see it. We've been to the mountaintop, and this is yes. our mountaintop, amen. And we may not get there with one another, but we shall possess it. Okay, so God yes, bless you. Jesus. And thank you, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, those who are viewing for joining us. Uh, we'll now have another song by our sister in Christ, not Vera Bradley, but she's going to have Vera Bradley's money. <laughs> Finally, Vera is a, a, a songbird of the Lord, and she is going to minister in song the Negro National Anthem, which still brings me to tears. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. That is so, such a beautiful song. So inspirational. So inspirational. Um, her name is Vera Riley. Thank you, Vera. That is such a, a, a beautiful song. You have such a tremendous voice. That song brings back great memories to me. 